Hey guys, welcome back to The Curly Reader. My name's Amanda and today I want to share with you all of the books that I read in May. Alright, so during the month of May I read 13 books, which I'm very happy with. Um, I was like some of the books weren't really flowing for me and I had to like put stuff down and pick it back up later. It was a whole thing. So I was able to finish 13 books though, um, six of which were audiobooks and seven were physical books. Of those, four of them were books that I currently owned and then nine of them were ones that I borrowed either from Scribd or from my library. And then as far as age breakdown, I read four middle grade books, one YA book, eight adult books, and then I also had one graphic novel in the, in the bunch. So without further ado, let's just get into the books. I'm going to go in the order that I read the books because that's the order that I have here. So that's what we're going to go with. And the first book that I read was actually a buddy read. Um, I read Firekeeper's Daughter by Angeline Booley with Amanda from The Reading and Writing Life. Um, and I will link her channel down below. Um, go check her out. But she was a great buddy reading buddy. <laughs> um, <clears throat> and this is a book that is written from an own voices author. Um, the author is Ojibwe and this is an about this is about an Ojibwe girl who lives in the Upper Peninsula of Michigan. Um, and hockey is really, really big there. She plays hockey. She's very involved in the hockey team and like the semi pro team there. And something happens, a murder happens, and she kind of gets caught up in this investigation that's going on. Um, there is a lot of drug related stuff, a lot of people dying, and um, it was very interesting. I will say the thing that I liked the most about this book was the information about the native tribe in the Upper Peninsula, about the tribe there and what it's like living on the reservation and living on tribal land and the politics behind it and their policies and procedures and that sort of thing because I'm very unfamiliar with that and so that was something that I really appreciated. I really wish there were more books out there that had this kind of content in it because I feel like there were some aspects of the actual plot line that were hit and miss for me um, but I did appreciate the information that was in it and so I did like that and I, I wish that there were more stories out there for the people could read to you know help educate themselves about that and maybe there is maybe I just haven't found them yet um, but I really really liked that aspect of it um, I will say there are a lot of trigger warnings in this book so if that's something that you need definitely look into those before picking this up but for me this one ended up being a four star read um, low four star read for me because like I said there were just a few things in there that didn't quite sit well with me uh, but overall it was an enjoyable reading experience. I ended up listening to that one on audiobook and the narrator was great as well. So that was Firekeeper's Daughter. The next book that I finished was one that I actually started in April and that is The Road Trip by Beth O'Leary and I actually have a comparison review with this and another book that I read this month up on my channel already. So very briefly though this is a it's a um, second chance romance about um what are their names? I'm not gonna be able Addie and Dylan I think. Um, <laughs> I think that's their names. Um, but they are on their way to a mutual friend's wedding and Dylan ends up rear-ending Addie with his car um, on the highway or whatever and they get in a car accident and they end up having to kind of carpool together in Addie's vehicle to get to the um, wedding along with one of Dylan's friends, Addie's sister, another companion. So it's a whole big thing and it's told in flashbacks that you're getting from when Addie and Dylan first met and then like periodically up until present day. Um, so yeah, it was really good. I will say there were a couple of decisions that some of the characters made that were not, didn't make a whole lot of sense for me. I'm like, mm, I would have called the cops, you know, but whatever. <laughs> 
story, you know, that's at the author's discretion, I guess. Um, but for that reason, this one got a high four stars for me, but I still really enjoyed it. And I enjoyed kind of you really, this is a really in depth look at a relationship from like beginning to end. And then, you know, obviously, beginning again, um, sort of thing. But it definitely gets into how all these outside influences affect a relationship. And so I really, really enjoyed it. And it was a fun atmosphere, this like road trip thing and all the hijinks that they that they all get into and that sort of thing was a lot of fun. So that one got a high four stars for me. All right, the next book that I finished was actually a book that I was reading out loud with my kids. And that is Ways to Make Sunshine by Renee Watson. Um, this is the third Renee Watson book I think that I've read um, and this is kind of a younger readers book um, it has illustrations in it let me see if I can find one like it has illustrations in it and it was a kind of a fast read the thing that kind of um, got me on this is on the back it says move over Ramona Quimby Portland has another neighbor you have to meet and so this one was great because it is about a black girl that lives in Portland and it's just kind of her run-of-the-mill daily it's very Ramona-esque but she's black and so it was fantastic her name's Ryan and it goes through a lot of like straightening her hair and the time that it takes to do that and how she can't go swimming because her hair is straight things like that there is discussion about church and the easter services and her anxiety and just think all these different things and it was a it was a lot of fun to read to my kids and my kids thought it was funny there's certain things that she does that you know hijinks that she gets into she shows her imagination i really really enjoyed this and so this one got a high four stars for me all right, and then the next one I listened to, and this was a recommendation from Lindsay at Lindsay's Little Library. Um, we were chatting and she's like, I'm listening to this book and I just need everybody to read it because it's so good. And she was really into it. It's called In an Instant by Suzanne Redfern or Redfern. Um, and this, I'm actually not sure if this is YA or adult because the main character is in high school, but right at the beginning of the book, she gets in a car accident. And it's just kind of what happens to her family after that. She comes from a very, um, I don't know, her family is going through a lot of stuff. Um, people aren't getting along. There's a lot of drama with family friends and relatives and all this kind of thing. And her best friend and, you know, whatever. And it's just kind of what happens as a result of this car accident. Um, it was, it was good. Um, I will say I would recommend reading this one in the winter time because it takes place during a blizzard. And so it just has that atmosphere of winter. Um, but it was still really good. I gave it four stars. All right. And then after that, I read People We Meet on Vacation by Emily Henry. And this is the other book that I had in my comparison review because there are certain elements of the road trip and People We Meet on Vacation that are very, very similar completely different stories, but they just have a lot of common themes throughout them. And so I did a comparison review kind of of them. And so that's already up on my channel and I will link that down below and up in the cards as well. Um, but yeah, so this is a friends to lovers romance and this is following Poppy and Alex and they become best friends in college and then very shortly after decide to start vacationing together and they vacation together every summer they take a summer trip and so and they've done this every year since they were in college and it's just kind of about their friendship and about how their friendship affects their relationships and how their relationships affect their friendships and all this stuff it's fantastic it's so funny so funny I was like laughing audibly so hard during certain parts of this book oh my goodness it was a trip um I thoroughly enjoyed it and so yeah this one got five stars from me because I appreciated so much the throughout this because it's friends to lovers you get such a sense of how deeply these characters care about each other's well-being and not just for their own selfishness but because they truly just care about them and I appreciated that so much I just I love so many things about this book and so there was one minor 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 thing that I was not the hugest fan of that was like mm, but it wasn't enough for me to dock any points so this one got five stars and then after that I read 
Mamas Don't Let Your Kids Grow Up to Be A-Holes, I think that's the name of it, by Karen Alper. And I had read, she wrote a book years ago called I Love My Little A-Holes and I loved it. <laughs> like it just, as a mom of very, very young kids at the time, like I just felt so seen when I read that book. And so I follow her on social media. On social media, she's Baby Sideburns. And I followed her on social media for years and I just think she's a trip. And so I didn't know she was writing a new book though because apparently I don't follow her real closely. Um, but she wrote a new book and it's all about, you know, like how to, parent your children now in this new stage of life and her oldest child is the same age as my oldest child and so it's just I'm I relate very closely to it and there is a lot of language like you can tell by the title she is not discreet um there's a lot of language in it but it still just like it made me laugh and a lot of it's just really common sense stuff like if you're parenting your children, you're probably doing okay. Um, but it was still just a lot of fun. And so I ended up giving that one three stars. All right. And then after that, I wrote, read, I did not write. I read a book that was sent to me for review. And this is Sophie Murphy Does Not Exist by T. Blanchard. I think it's Tiffany Blanchard. Um, and this was a book that was sent to me by Chicken Scratch Books. Um, they are a new publishing company that are putting out middle grade books. And the unique thing about this company is that for every book they put out, they are also publishing a reading online course to go with it. And so they were kind enough to send me a copy for each of my kids. And then I did the reading course course with them um, and I will have a completely separate review for that um, but I read this alongside of my kids and this is about Sophie whose dad has passed away and she tries to find his presence on social media so to say um, it's kind of like a Wikipedia sort of website and he's not on there and so she derives from that that he didn't matter because he is not on this platform. And so she comes up with this goal that she is going to get onto this platform somehow. So she starts coming up with all these different things that she could do to try to get, you know, noticed and become famous. And it goes from there. There's a definite like point to the story, which I'm sure you can derive from, from that, but it was good. It was, um, very easy to read. Um, my one critique is that the chapter titles, so like this is chapter 27, but it's day 34. So it's like she's going to form a new her and this is day 34, but it's chapter 27. And so my kids kept getting confused because they're like, wait a minute, it's, it would have been easier if she would have titled the chapters something different or had them correspond to the chapter numbers and the days. But, um, yeah, so that is this book. Um, I ended up giving this one three stars. It was good. It wasn't anything that I will probably come back to. Um, but if you are looking for kind of a unique or something different um, to do with your kids, especially if you're homeschooling or anything like that, um, they do have the online courses available for these. And so that may be an option. And I know they're coming out with their second book here soon, if it's not already out. So um, Sophie Murphy Does Not Exist got three stars from me. All right, and then after that, I read Where the Lost Where the Lost Wander by Amy Harmon. Um, this was actually for Angie from Science Mama's Historical Fiction Book Club. Um, and so I will link the book club as well as Angie's channel down below. Um, but this is a historical fiction book that is set kind of Oregon Trail time frame. It's 1853. And it just follows this group of people that are going out west and kind of their travels. Um, it's specifically told in dual perspective between a guy and a girl um, and kind of their alternating points of view, but they're both in the same caravan. I think it's what it's called. Um, and so they are going out west and just what they face along the way. It definitely has a lot of stuff as far as like the native groups in the west at the time and how they were reacting to people coming through. Um, it's very graphic at times. It's very graphic at times. Um, there are lots of trigger warnings in this one as well but I felt like it like it was it was well done. And the author's note in the end, definitely she explains like why she made some of the decisions that she did and how she wanted to try to portray it as accurately as possible and to be fair to both sides of the story sort of thing. Um, not that you, 
I don't know if I said that right, but um, anyway, I ended up giving this one a high four stars. Um, it was good. It didn't blow me out of the water like I was expecting it to. I've heard so many people like rave about it and it didn't um, totally blow me out of the water, but it was still really, really good. And um, yeah, I highly recommend this. If you like um, historical fiction books, definitely check this one out because uh, Amy Harmon does a really, really great job of just explaining the atmosphere of what was going on at the time. And so, yeah, that one got high four stars from me. And then I got from NetGalley, I got The Secret Garden, the graphic novel, which I was so excited to read because I just read The Secret Garden in March. And I know that there's a contemporary, like, um, retelling of the secret garden in graphic novel form coming out later this year which i'm so excited about expect that on a most anticipated releases but that's coming later this year but this one i didn't know was coming out and so this is done by mariah marsden and hannah luchtefeld i don't know if i said that right um but it's just a graphic novel adaptation of the secret garden and it was so cute and the illustrations were so cute and so um i will put on the screen its release date because i did get it from netgalley which means it's a future release um but i just read it one day because i was in the mood for something sweet and this did the trick because i mean can you get any sweeter than the story of the secret garden i don't think so um so yeah this one got four stars from me it was just yeah, it did the job. It was sweet and it was a secret garden. All right. And then after that, I read my book that I was reading for Chantel's um, Read Your Bookshelf Challenge. Her challenge in May was to read a book that you should have read in high school. And so I finally read The Poisonwood Bible. This was one of the ones that I like had to put down because I was just not in the mood for it. And then I ended up picking it back up and I just blew through it. Um, but this is a book about... Um, the what was their name uh price the price family and they go to the belgian congo in 1959 as missionaries and it's this minister his wife and their four daughters and this is really the story told from the point of view of the four daughters you get his wife's perspective occasionally like at the beginning of each section um but it's mainly told from the point of view of each of the four daughters and how their father's decision to go on this mission affected their lives. Um, at a certain point in the, you know, you find out that, I'm not gonna say that because that's gonna spoil stuff, <laughs> Never mind. Um, but yeah, just the decisions of the father and how those affected each of the four girls and they affect them totally differently. And this follows the girls from the point that they go on the mission. Um, and I think like the youngest one is probably like six or seven at the time. They're like six or seven, like, 10 or 11 and then like maybe 14 maybe i i don't know if that's exactly right um when they first start out and then it follows them all the way through adulthood and how their lives have been affected from this um but this also takes place in the belgian congo in the 1960s primarily when things were not great um there was a lot of political stuff going on a lot of economic stuff going on and it was just a a very dangerous place and there's a lot of corruption and so this kind of gets into that a little bit as well um overall though this one didn't really do it for me um i ended up giving it three stars i appreciated at the end i appreciated the whole picture of seeing the daughters like how you know like i said like how this decision from their father really affected the rest of their life um but reading the book it was just kind of blah and i i don't know it was it was a lot for the payoff that it was it was a long book for the payoff that it was so this one got three stars from me but it is done i can now say that i read a book that was on my senior summer reading list all right and then after that i read a fall of marigolds by susan meisner i read as bright as heaven by susan meisner um last year I don't even remember when that was I think it was last summer um, that I read that and I've been wanting to pick up a fall of marigolds because I knew that it had to do with New York City and Ellis Island specifically and it does um, so this is a story it's told in dual timeline um, but the primary story is told from the point of view of Clara Wood I believe is her first name yeah Clara Wood 
Um, it's in September of 1911, and she is a nurse on Ellis Island. Um, she helps in the medical wing there, in the hospital there, and just kind of takes care of the immigrants that are getting off of ships that are not healthy enough to go onto the mainland of the U.S. yet and, you know, and help determining whether or not they're going to get sent back to Europe or wherever they've come from or whether they're going to be permitted to go to land. And she is also a survivor of the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire um, that happened in, yeah, earlier that year. Um, in 1911 and so it really talks about that fire and how it affected her and it and all that I loved that part of the story so much we also get this other timeline of what was her name Taryn I think and she is a like a fabric restorer I don't know if that's a word but she does um, she works in a fabric store and she helps like restore old fabrics and she was present during 9-11. Um, her husband was killed in the towers and are in the terrorist attack. He was in one of the towers. Um, and so this is actually takes place in 2011. So 10 years after 9-11. Um, and so you're getting her perspective as well. And there's this um, scarf that has marigolds on it that's in both stories. And so that's what kind of ties the stories together. I felt like Taryn's story just wasn't solid. Um, I felt like it could have been left out and it would have been just as good of a book, to be honest. Um, we definitely needed more of her story if it was going to be in the book. We just didn't get enough of it. And then there were certain things with Clara's story that just mm, didn't sit right with me. Um, some of her behaviors didn't make a lot of sense, things like that. That's something that's like a stickler for me is that I need things to be believable. And there were certain aspects of this that just weren't. Um, I really enjoyed learning about Ellis Island and the Triangle Shirt waste factory fire um and hearing like what that might have been like for somebody to um witness and it was horrific oh my goodness it was just like gut-wrenchingly horrific um but overall this one was kind of a miss for me and I'm kind of bummed about that I have a couple more Susan Meisner books and I'm really hoping that they're better because this one nah, was just meh for me and so this one got three stars all right and then after that, I finished Mere Christianity. I read this with Krista as part of her read-along. She did she did a month-long read-along for Mere Christianity. And you guys, when I tell you this is one of the best books I have ever read in my life, this is seriously, like, I don't know if you can tell. Well, you can tell they're rainbow. This is just insanely good. Whether you're a believer or not, this has so much good stuff to say about morals and morality and why it's important to do good things. And it, these were, so Mere Christianity is by C.S. Lewis and they were originally radio talks that he did during World War II. So in the UK. And then they took them and they transcribed them into a book. And he has since edited the book and added things to it um, to kind of uh, explain some things that were being questioned. But it's so good. If there's one quote, if there's one thing that stood out to me from this book above everything else, um, there is a quote. I'm not going to be able to find it because, I mean, like, there's, I've, uh, yeah. Let me see if I can find it. Pause. All right, that took a hot minute, but I did find it. Um, okay, so this was the one thing that like stood out to me above everything else. It's a quote and it says, if you look for truth, you may find comfort in the end. If you look for comfort, you will not get either comfort or truth, only soft soap and wishful thinking to begin with, and in the end, despair. So that was like a huge like moment for me because it's so true. Um, if you're looking for truth, you may find comfort, but if you're only looking to find comfort and to be reaffirmed in what you already believe, you're not gonna get any truth. And so, Go read this if you haven't already. Thank you, Krista, for hosting. She has four discussion videos up on her channel about this as well. It was so good to read this. I'm so glad I finally read it. And now I'm thoroughly looking forward to reading more C.S. Lewis. So that one got all the stars in the world from me. Like it, oh, such a good book.
All right. And then the last book that I read is Red Stars by David Morosinoto. Morosinoto? Ooh. He's Italian. This is translated from the, from the Italian. Um, and this is the case of Victor and Nadia's notebooks. And so this follows twins that live in Leningrad during World War II, and they are evacuated from the city. And in the process of being evacuated, they're separated. And so it is told in alternating perspectives. Um, one of the perspectives is in black ink, and the other one, let me find it. <laughs> Okay, it's in red ink. Um, and so they're both writing journals throughout their time and what they're going through on these two different journeys um, and all the craziness that is going on in Russia or the Soviet Union at the time, um, specifically around Leningrad. This focuses really on the siege on Leningrad and what that was like. Um, the kids are, I think, 12 at the beginning of the book. Um, but this has in it like different pictures um and maps and the whole premise of this like at the very beginning is one of the um commandants or i don't remember what it was let's see yeah um the commissar people's commissariat for internal affairs and so it is colonel it's one of the colonels it has been given these notebooks and he has to read the notebooks and decide if these kids are guilty or innocent of crimes against the state and so he has to figure that out and so this was super interesting um it wasn't completely believable but i think he touched on a lot of what would have happened in the soviet union around this time frame um it is graphic. I would say this is definitely on the high end of middle grade. I would say like 12, 13 at least to read this because it is definitely graphic at times. Um, there are times where they witness people hanging other people. They, um, somebody ends up getting fingers chopped off. Like it, they talk about cannibalism and because people are starving and like it's, it gets intense. Um, but these are the realities of what people lived with at the time. And so um, it was really, really good, uh, but it was definitely graphic. So um, yeah, so, and like I said, this is told in journal format, which is something else that just kind of made it read fast, um, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. I ended up giving this one four stars. All right, those are the 13 books that I read in May. So if you've read any of these, I would love to hear your comments about them down below. If you're planning on reading any of them now, let me know that as well. What's your favorite book that you read in May? Let me know all the things. And yeah, I hope that you enjoyed this and I hope that you stick around and subscribe. And until next time, see ya.